All right. Hello? Hello, where? Hello? A common question that is put forth to the majesty. What word was that that I just used? A common question is how do you do it? How do you overcome the pain and the anguish and the fury and the depression and the rage of having a bad day? You don't. You never. Each one of them gets stored somewhere in the back of your mind and one day you're going to lash out and it's not going to be that person's fault but because you lost money on some bullshit trades, somewhere down the road it's going to come out and it's going to be pit- someone's going to be the you're going to you're going to take it out on somebody but the way to get past it is to remember that tomorrow is going to be the same freaking nightmare again or your redemption and today was my redemption from an awful trading day yesterday into the miracle that was FXCM today. Buying it on the dip when it didn't break 250, holding it till around 285, buying it again at 285 after it went to three, bought it at 285 on the pullback, used the 285 as my stop, watched the stock go to 313, sold it again, bought it again at 320 to then get it to 350, then to sell it and go short at 350, knowing well that that's where the algorithms generally like to sell stocks up a nice 50% of the on the day the stock was and coming into a big half number late in the day. My friend said, why? Why would you sell this thing? I thought you just said it has a chance to go to five. I said, yes, it does have a chance to go to five. That's why I own the May 250 calls, just in case this thing does go to five. But right here, I'm selling the stock and I'm going short. Why would you go short? A stock that you think's going to five, maybe even tomorrow. I said, it's just for a trade. And if it breaks 355, we're out. But here at 350, we're risking pretty much five cents because chances are they're only going to bring this thing maybe two or three cents above 350 just to screw the people that have their stops at 350 and 351. They'll maybe bring it to 352 or 353, but they didn't even do that. 350. We never got stopped out of 355, and down she went. Now, I'm not going to say I held it all the way back to 285, but my God, the charts were working so great with that stock. So once it broke, three didn't break the 350, we got short, we covered it around the 338. Great. Making 12 cents on a $3 stock, mind you, is fantastic, considering sometimes I'll trade an $80 stock for 12 cents, for God's sakes. So... Then people will say, well, what do we do now? What do you think? What's going to happen? I'm like, I don't know anything, but if it breaks 318, this fucker's probably going to go test 285 again. And holy shit, people. At one time, two times, three times, it couldn't break 318. 318, why? Because that was a consolidation breakout from earlier in the day. Learn how to read your charts, man. It's not, it's all about believing in your chart reading ability and having faith and not being a panicky little bitch like I normally am because I you know I'm thinking where is this thing really gonna go it's I'm gonna go 10 cents 15 cents it's not like I'm trading GoPro which the bids just dry up or the offers just leave and you're sitting at a two-point loss in two seconds so when it broke 318 it was only logical for this thing to come back to 285 then holy crap when it went back to 285 that's right we bought the fucker again, 287, and wrote it back to three dollars. So it's a day like that, where, and mind you, we held our we dollar cost average one more time, one more time in that stinking piece of shit U.S. steel, and and here it is. I'll get back to you, friendo, my boy Ryan. We're gonna start doing some vaporizer in, uh, in infomercials because. If you're going to get involved in the vaporizers, you should learn what vaporizers are out there that will serve your purposes. Um, what was I going to say? All right. All right. Stop ringing the phone. Um, oh, no. Now I lost my train of thought. Oh, yes. The U.S. deal. So one time, three times, seven times, 50 times, the stock's been letting me down, right? So I was like, you know what? The whole market's rallying. This thing's just sitting here doing nothing. But it refused to break down under that 
20, 21 se up, uh, dude. How do you keep doing this? Stop calling me. Wow. I, I, I didn't, couldn't find the freaking button. Ryan, after 30 rings, don't you assume that I'm not here? Anyway, so U.S. Steel, dollar cost averaging works. Again, of course, as long as you don't own MCP or Walter Energy or Cliff or BTU or GoGo or Candy, which is going to bring me to my last point, and I'm going to wrap this up because I've been up for about 36 straight hours. I couldn't sleep. I had my buddy coming to the house for a VWAP session. I was up thinking the ECB was going to be earlier than it was. I couldn't fall asleep. I started watching all kinds of stupid TV I haven't seen in a while. Next thing you know, it's four in the morning. And I'm like, oh, can I go to sleep now? I got the ringing in the ears. By the way, for you tinnitus sufferers out there, is this something that is just for me? Or is this when you don't sleep well, does the ringing in your ears get worse? It's like when I had that sinus infection, the ringing in my ears was like the freaking, the freaking bells going off. Uh... Uh, what was it going to say? Dollar cost averaging brings me to my point. U.S. Steel, right? So finally, for the love of God, we're buying more and more and more. 2170 yesterday, 22 yesterday, 2205 yesterday, bought more, 2175. And then today I was like, I can't believe this thing. I was like, all I wanted it to do was get to 2250. And if you saw this morning, U.S. Steel opens around 2210, 2230, gets to 2250, breaks it, so I'm thinking, finally, this thing's going to go. But I sold some at 2250, and then the whole the thing tanked. But then the market was recovering, and this wasn't recovering along with it. So this market was so powerful that even the piece of shit that is U.S. Steel managed to rally, and now maybe we've put in that quadruple bottom on U.S. Steel, like we did on Cree. I want to tell you about Cree, C-R-E-E. -E. I want to talk about CLDX. And I want to talk about every piece of garbage stock that I've ever recommended on these programs and this show and these videos. Do you realize that other than the QQQ going up and me telling you to be long the QQQ, most of the other stocks I told you to buy have sucked? Do you realize that? I am not a stock picker. That's why I am afraid that if my alert service is one of these services that I'm giving you positions and what to hang on to, by the time you get the alert, call your broker, as if you call it a broker, or put your trade in, I might be getting out of the trade. So we're going to have to figure out, we're going to have to make sure that you get the buy and the sell signal. And don't be amazed that if it's the same day. And because that's part of what we do here. There was no reason to hang on to the FXCM. It got to 350 today. That was our goal. Very far-fetched goal it was. But that's all we... Once it got there, we were like, hey, we got to sell this thing. And we held the option. That's about it. But we're out of the stock right now. CLDX got to our price by... Almost by 10 cents. 23.85 on CLDX was our target. Got there. Got there, broke it by about 5 or 6 cents. Sold it. Bought it back on the way down. We could have waited another point or so before we bought it back, but we bought it back a little prematurely. And then there's Credence and Silver. You want to see two charts? I couldn't think of it the other day. Silver, SLV, and Credence, LED uh, lighting. Same looking chart. And if you see the similarities between SLV and Cree, you're one step closer for trying to figure out what I talk about when I say the exhaustion situation formation. It's a chart pattern that I've noticed that it really shows you that there is no more sellers left in the stock and the stock's ready to go. You had it in Cree, you had it in Netflix, and you had it in silver. Um, so yeah, all that stuff. But let's go back to where we are today on January, whatever today's date is. This is what I want to do. If you want to come watch what we do or watch what I do or watch what my friends do and how they trade, today's the night. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. I'll give you the link right here on the video. Come to the show. I'll give you the password even here so you don't even have to think. 
You type in the thing, it'll ask you for the password, do the password, you can put in a phone number, an email address, and off you go. And you come and hang out with us tomorrow for some possible monster option plays. Because hey, if the market breaks out, we're gonna be able to do some good, some decent trades. There's a lot of stocks that are sitting right below strike prices, could be very exciting. And if we roll over and give maybe, you know, 10% of what we just moved up, we're going to be able to make some move on some of these pullbacks, even on the stocks that I like. The Cree looking for a pullback, maybe the Alibaba pullback, possibly, uh, what's the other one? Cree, Alibaba, even the, in the queues, we're looking maybe for a little pullback because they've had some really nice moves. Um, but we'll talk about options because tomorrow's options expiration, you know, uh, weekly options. So we start to look for those. Uh, more importantly, dudes and dudettes, things are just, you know, I'm getting back to you one by one. Hope you appreciate it. I've been talking to a lot of people on the phone. Uh, I make most of my phone calls after the close. So if, if it's all right, if you do send me an email, let me know if it's all right to call you like Eastern time at 10 o'clock. That's, that's my groove. My kids are asleep. I'm... You know, I'm just hanging out, having a few drinks. We could schmooze, keeping it casual. You know, look at me. I'm a wreck. Can't even keep my eyes open. Um, what else? What else? What else can we talk about? I guess that's it. Oh, snail dick. Um, just assuming that, you know, again, snail dick, most of the time when the stock reports earnings and it gaps down, it, it tends to come back over a given amount of time. Today it came back pretty much all of it today, so that was another good idea. FFIV was interesting this morning also. But again, what we're doing now, no rules, no regulations. I don't wanna hear anybody complaining, oh, I paid for the chat room. How come nobody's in here at one o'clock? Uh, uh, nothing's going, why is there nobody talking? I thought this was supposed to be about stock. My whole thing back in the day when I was running the room and, you know, we try to keep you guys entertained by doing other stuff, comedy bits, we'd have interviews, and then we talk about stocks. No more of that shit. We talk about stocks from about 9.15 to 12 o'clock, and that's it. Chances are there's nothing more to talk about. And then what I'm planning on doing is we'll show you a couple of seminars you know, you want to learn about VWAP, we'll make a short VWAP kind of film and we'll put it on loop and then we'll play some music and, you know, but the ideas of being strapped to the chat room are, are a thing of the past, all right? When there's something to talk about, you'll get an email and it'll be like a flash mob. Hey, I'm coming back to the chat room at 1.30, be there because something's important. Or you never have to come to the chat room and just get the text alert system going. The only thing is, I'm going to warn you, the text alert, again, if you're not quick, it might be over before you get in. Chances are, I mean, there's no way we could have been sending text alerts with FXCM. Buy it. Oh, wait, sell it. Oh, sell it now. Oh, buy it back. Buy it back. Sell it. Sell. Buy it back. We did... 14 trades in the stock. You're getting, your phone would have been like, what? Oh, we, we buy it, sell, sell it, I'll buy it. So, I mean, it's it's difficult. And then, you know, with GoPro, I liked it at 48 and change the other day. Uh, you know, by the, by the time you got your text alert, it was 50 and a half. So it's a difficult thing. That's why I say live is always better, but live is always better up until noon because this dude needs to just take a break, walk away, go do workout. Something, something other than sitting in that room staring at screens. I could handle it from 9.30 to 12. And after that, private sessions. You want to learn about VWAP? You want to learn about option strategies? It's all going to be a part of it. And like I said, if you don't think being a part of what I'm doing is worth any amount of money, Five grand, ten grand, a hundred thousand dollars worth of information. Today alone would have been if you paid five hundred bucks for two months, you made it today. If you paid a thousand dollars for six months, you made it today. If you paid two thousand for the year, you made it today. And then now everything's cake. Is that the saying? Now everything is butter or gravy. You've already made the money that you laid out to learn. 
Now it's free forever. It's awesome. It's great when you can have a day like this and oh, I feel that I've accomplished something. I've learned, I've made money, I'm in the groove. And that's what I wanna do. Before I spontaneously combust, or just the ringing in my ears is just way too much for me to take, get to me, find me, let me help you. And if you're not completely satisfied within a couple of weeks, we'll part as friends, and that'll be it. All right, I need to get some sleep. And uh, wow, that's about, that is about as far. I'm actually trying right now to open my eyes. They don't even move. Look at them. I'm a burnout. 36 hours, I think I've been up straight. And it's not even ending. I got to go to basketball practice now. And I got to straighten up the house before my wife gets home. Because you know how she gets. All right. Have a nice day. Oh, boy, what a day.